Android 15 is a bigger deal than you think. It's launching first on Google Pixel phones later this summer, and it has a bunch of new features to make your phone more useful, secure, and private. Don't worry, we'll get to all of those in the course of this video. But really, there's only one big new marquee feature in Android 15, and its name is Gemini. Gemini is Google's answer to ChatGPT, but it's also much more than that. It's an AI that Google wants to put at the heart of everything you do on your phone, like Google Assistant on steroids. Just like its OpenAI rival, though, it runs on an LLM, or large language model. It's trained on enormous datasets, meaning it can interact with you much more like you're just talking to another human being. That's different from the current Google Assistant, which is based on a much narrower machine learning model, prioritizing speed, basic speech recognition, and basic task execution. Things like setting a timer, calling your contacts, or casting to a smart speaker. Gemini is a generative AI, so it can produce original written work and images. It's also multimodal by design, which means it can accept input in the form of audio, images, or video as well. That means it can see and hear more like a human too. Right now, you can preview a version of Gemini and even have it replace Google Assistant on your Pixel running Android 14. And Google will even take your money if you want to play with a more advanced version of it on the web. But there's also a miniaturized version of Google's AI that can run locally without an internet connection. It's called Gemini Nano, and it's coming to Pixels with Android 15. That can mean your next Android phone, or perhaps even your current one once it's upgraded, will be able to do a lot of this neat AI stuff even when it's offline. And if you want an idea of how Gemini will spread further throughout the entire Android ecosystem, then just look back to the original Google Assistant. First, it was Pixel exclusive before being rolled out more widely. So yeah, I'd totally expect this to ship out of the box on the Galaxy S25 and not just limited Google branded devices like the Pixel 9. That said, we've already seen quite a few examples of what Gemini will bring to Android 15 on Pixel specifically. At Google I.O., Android engineering boss Dave Burke demoed a raft of Gemini features that really seem to marry the best parts of Google Assistant with the thing Google was trying to build before Assistant, Google Now on Tap. You might not remember this feature which launched way back in 2015 before being replaced by assistant the following year, but basically it tried to look at what was on your screen and provide useful info and shortcuts based on it, using Google's knowledge graph. Now through the power of the LLM, Gemini can do the same thing in a much more powerful way. For example, with things like YouTube videos and PDFs. Ingesting a PDF document and then answering questions on it is bread and butter LLM functionality. And it can do the same thing for YouTube videos by tapping into text from YouTube's auto transcription feature. The most impressive feature, or perhaps the most concerning one depending on your perspective, was the demo that showed detection of scam callers attempting to impersonate the user's bank. That's something that only an advanced on-device AI model would be able to do, because it's able to understand not just the words being spoken, but the context and intent of the caller. That allows it to watch out for the warning signs you typically see in a call from a fraudster. Now, Google isn't sending your call audio to the cloud. Instead, everything is done on device. But for a lot of folks, it's still kind of moving closer to that creepy sort of territory. After all, although your audio isn't going to Google's servers, there is still an intelligence created by Google listening to what you're saying. How accepting you are of this sort of thing will depend on how much trust you put in Google. And let's be honest here, many people do not trust Google for perfectly valid reasons. There is some kind of precedent for this sort of on-device machine learning, watching out for red flags though. Apple uses a similar approach to scan for potential CSAM material on iPhones as part of a feature that first debuted in iOS 15. Now, Google says the Gemini features coming in Android 15 are just the start of a multi-year journey towards making Android a truly AI OS. And Google's Samir Samat even dropped that cringiest of cliches about how AI is the profound opportunity to make smartphones truly smart. If you've been following phones for as long as I have, then you'll have been hearing that for the past decade and a half. But for the first time, I actually think it might be kind of appropriate here. Having a helpful, always-on intelligence at your disposal on the most important computer you own has massive potential benefits. One of the Pixel series' greatest strengths has been around ambient computing, features that work intelligently in the background to help you in going about your day-to-day -day business. Things like now playing to pick up and identify music nearby, the at-a-glance widget area that can highlight upcoming flights and weather warnings. Plugging an actual LLM into these features with real intelligence could be huge, going far beyond the basic pattern recognition we've seen so far. For example, in future, Gemini might not just show you that your flight is delayed, but 
rebook the onward train tickets that you might have bought for a later time, automatically email your hotel to amend your reservation, and even scan the airline's terms and conditions to figure out how much compensation you could get based on the circumstances of your own trip. But compared to Google Assistant, Gemini's added complexity and creativity come with way more potential pitfalls. Just look at the current Gemini 1.0 preview on Pixel phones, and it's not hard to generate responses that make it look as dumb as a bag of rocks. Like any other LLM, Gemini can hallucinate, make mistakes, and trip itself up in ways that wouldn't apply to a traditional voice assistant that has a much more limited potential set of inputs and outputs. Google Assistant can't write you a poem about Sonic the Hedgehog fighting at the Battle of Agincourt, but it also won't try and tell you that Grover Cleveland's name begins with the letter J. These are challenges that everyone building LLMs is dealing with. Right now, even the smartest AI bots make mistakes, often. For Gemini or any other AI to be truly useful, they need to be reliable enough that you're not always needing to double check their work. Nevertheless, facing competition from OpenAI and inevitably Apple, Google is pushing ahead big time with Gemini, and Android is what's going to bring it to hundreds of millions of users over the next year or so. So it's coming, and Android 15 is the vehicle it's going to arrive on. Besides Gemini though, Android 15 has plenty going for it in terms of traditional new features for your phone, so here are a handful of my favorites. Private space is one of the more interesting features in Android 15 that gives you a completely separate password protected pocket dimension of apps that are normally hidden from view. It's siloed off from the rest of Android to the point where you'll need to re-add whichever Google accounts you want to use in your private space. And you can lock this private space with either your biometrics, your existing pin or password, or a different one entirely. It's a great way to add extra security or reduce the risk of embarrassment depending on what you put there. Circle of Search is already available on Pixel and Galaxy S24 phones, and it's expanding to the rest of the ecosystem in Android 15. We already mentioned Google Now on Tap earlier, but this is another throwback to that classic Google feature from the mid-2010s, only this time faster and tapped into the power of Google Lens. And Google even showcased improved intelligence for this feature, including study help in the form of formula recognition. That's available now, with a more comprehensive version promised for the Android 15 release. Satellite connectivity improvements will bring Android in line with what the past couple generations of iPhones can already do in emergency situations. Android 15 includes APIs to let apps know when the device has a satellite connection, as well as UI for helping users manage that connection. Last time around, satellite connections on Android had a bit of a false start with the abortive Snapdragon satellite launch, so we'll have to wait and see how widely this is adopted. Third-party apps should be getting improved support for better low-life photography thanks to new controls coming in Android 15 that'll potentially bring more of your phone's baked-in low-light shooting chops to apps that also have a camera component. These changes include improving the brightness in the viewfinder in darker conditions, scanning QR codes in low-light, and even incorporating some flash controls. A new sensitive notifications permission should crack down on malicious apps trying to read one-time passwords arriving by text message. So even if apps are reading your other text messages and alerts, they won't be able to intercept a one-time password to hijack your accounts. HDR Headroom is a new feature you'll appreciate if you've ever had your eyeballs cooked by scrolling past an HDR video in a darker environment. It helps developers set an appropriate maximum brightness level for this kind of content, so you still get that rich HDR effect without feeling like you've accidentally peered into the Ark of the Covenant. Multitasking is getting better in stock Android as Google finally adopts some of the big screen app juggling features that Samsung and others have been building into their foldables for several years at this point. You can now save app pairs, just like you can on a Galaxy foldable, to easily jump into a split screen view. And more options are coming for the taskbar too, giving you the choice of the transient taskbar from Android 14 or the always on taskbar from before. That's in addition to making apps edge to edge by default, eliminating the last few bits of Chrome that you might have seen around the status bar and gesture area. The predictive back gesture that's been in the process of coming to Android since all the way back in version 13 is finally enabled by default for apps that support it, as opposed to being hidden behind the developer options menu. Now in properly coded apps, you'll see a preview of the app or menu you're swiping back to, just as Google originally intended all the way back in 2022. 
Android 15 also builds on the improved support for gendered languages like French and German that were introduced in Android 14, with a new menu to choose how you want to be addressed, so Android can show you messages in a more grammatically accurate way. For example, here in French, the word for developer changes depending on the gender of the user. And we've also got typography improvements for some Asian languages, including Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, with variable weight for these characters, and more accurate representation of old Japanese hiragana characters with a new typeface. And Android 15 keeps up with Google's rolling deprecation of older Android API levels, with apps targeting Android 6 Marshmallow or older no longer supported in the OS without additional command line jiggery pokery. So no more Flappy Bird, I'm afraid, but this will mean apps can't get around new security measures in more recent versions by targeting an older platform version level. Android 15 is vanilla ice cream, following Google's alphabetical dessert-based codename scheme, and as usual, the basic appearance of Android 15 will probably depend on whose phone you're using, so most likely your Pixel or Galaxy will still pretty much look like it does now. But the way it feels and works just might change a whole lot, with all these new features built around Gemini, which will swiftly see the old Google Assistant swept under the proverbial rug, as well as new everyday features like predictive back and the private space. Android took a back seat at this year's Google I.O. conference, but that doesn't change the fact that it's the world's most popular OS and a really important portal into Google's other apps and services. That said, Android 15 is important to Google pretty much exclusively because of what it means for its AI efforts. The battle lines of the AI era are being drawn, and the success or otherwise of Gemini on Android will, for a large part, determine whether Google is as big a player in this new field of computing as it was during the early days of the mobile revolution. That's it for now. Let us know what you think of Gemini and Android 15 so far down in the comments. Stick around for more Android and Pixel coverage coming very soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.